Hello there, it's Andy Parks from the Washington Times, and here we go again. Another week of wacky news, including my favorite. Nancy Pelosi and other big-time libs are blaming Republicans for turning wokeness against them. Plus, I'll check in with Dave Boyer, Washington Times Deputy Politics Editor. Stay tuned. You know, as a listener to my podcast, you're qualified to receive a 50% discount on an annual digital subscription to the Washington Times. That's right. Simply go to WashingtonTimes.com slash Andy. That's WashingtonTimes.com slash A-N-D-Y. All right. So how funny is it that wokeness has blown up in the Democrats' faces thanks to Republicans? Even the liberal New York Times posed the question, are Republicans using wokeness as kryptonite against the Democrats? The short answer, yes. <laughs> now all we need to do is get rid of that CRT and the term racist. Americans are sick and tired of this. They finally found a way to make the libs run away from key buzzwords. The election results from a couple of weeks ago showed that real America is not going to tolerate this stuff being thrown at them every day. My message to the left? Keep doing what you're doing. That's right. Let your poll numbers sink even lower. Keep calling every white person a racist. Keep pushing that bogus critical race theory in our schools. Keep hammering every white person as privileged. Bring it on. Meanwhile, another couple of Democrats are throwing in the towel. Maybe they're seeing the writing on the wall. Pat Leakey Leahy is turning in his gavel. Oh, yeah, you may recall he got his nickname Leakey for leaking, on more than one occasion, sensitive national security information while a member of the Senate Intel Committee. Goodbye, Pat. Sorry you couldn't have left sooner. Also on the way out, California Congresswoman Jackie Spires. She says 12 years is enough. And you know, that's a thought now being cited by many Democrats who announce they're bailing out before the midterm elections. A rhino who should be on her way out is Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney. A few days ago, the Wyoming GOP voted not to recognize her as a Republican. Again, yes, the second time this year they've done that. She's the vice chair of the January 6th committee and, of course, turned on Donald Trump, and she's proud of that. But here's something funny. Like her Democrat cohort, she had no problem with the death and destruction left behind by Antifa and Black Lives Matter. Ted Cruz says Cheney's best chance to win in 2024, the Democratic primary. <laughs> And man, is he right. More crazy stuff on the way, but first, joining me now is Washington Times Deputy Politics Editor Dave Boyer. Hi, Dave. Hi, Andy. How are you doing? Doing just fine. Biden visits New Hampshire in effort to shore up bridges and Democrats' fortunes. Why New Hampshire? Well, one big reason is uh, Senator Maggie Hassan, a Democrat, is up for re-election there next year, and uh, she's considered to be one of the, the most endangered Democrats in, in Congress. Their House lawmakers also are Democrats and also are under the gun, largely for their support of the president's big spending ways. He wanted to go there and remind voters that their delegation in Congress is getting things done. Now, is this part of an overall tour of the country to sell his trillion-dollar spending bills? Yes, it is. The president today is going to Detroit to visit uh, General Motors' electric vehicle zero plant to promote features in his uh, spending bills that would uh, pay for uh, hundreds of millions of dollars for electric vehicle charging stations around the country. And uh, there are tax credits for people who buy electric vehicles, of course. There's an extra tax credit proposed for people who buy vehicles. I know you'll find this interesting. Uh, union shops, as opposed to non-union plants, they would get an extra $4,500 under Biden's proposal. So, uh, And then he and his ca uh, vice president and his cabinet members will also be going around the country pretty much to sell a plan that's already been approved. All right, I'm going to move on to something else. China soars past U.S. in total worth since joining the World Trade Organization. Was this anticipated? If you listen to Donald Trump, the former president, absolutely. He's been saying for years that 
uh, China has not been playing by the rules, and, and uh, they got a, they're getting a huge break from the WTO because they're considered a developing country and get special breaks because of that designation as far as their uh, protectionist abilities to uh, protect their domestic industries. And you know, since they joined the WTO, uh, almost it'll be 20 years ago next month. They have grown exponentially in wealth uh, to the point where they've leapfrogged over the United States in in, uh, an amount of total wealth. Now, part of their deal is to be buying more U.S. goods and services. Are they doing it? No. Uh, promised under the trade agreement with uh, Trump, you'll remember, to you know, dramatically increase their uh, amount of purchases of uh, everything from, from the U.S. from agricultural products to electronics to uh, you name it. And uh, they are not living up to that part of the bargain. Uh, the Biden administration knows it. And they're, you know, they say they're giving Chinese officials a stern talking to, uh, but they haven't decided to do anything concrete about it as of yet. Yeah, I don't think the U.S. seems uh, uh, ready to step on the toes of the Chinese right now for many different reasons. (laughs) (laughs) Like Taiwan, for example. Yeah, yeah. Uh, White House skips introduction of key partner Kamala Harris at bill signing. Oops, I guess this was just an oversight. (laughs) You know, Andy, you really can't make up stuff like this. You know, the vice president had just returned from France on a five-day trip with her husband. She returns to the United States to find uh, headlines about how the the White House is just kind of fed up with her and her staff, and they've thrown up their hands. They don't know what else to do with it about her. They can't help her improve her image, which is, uh, you know, her job approval rating is at 28 percent. So after all that, on Monday, White House press secretary went to great lengths to say that you know, Vice President Kamala Harris is a, quote, key partner of the president's team, and she's, you know, a really valuable member of the of the administration. And hours later, at this bill signing ceremony for the infrastructure bill, Biden and Kamala Harris come out of the White House together, smiling, waving, and, and she walks up to the podium on the South Lawn, and, and the, the White House announcer, who's also known as the voice of God, um, says, <laughs> Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Heather Kirchenbaum, the local union official who was also supposed to be speaking and totally skipped over the vice president and who was standing there at the microphone kind of with an awkward smile. And, and uh, you know, they say it was, uh, it was just an oversight, but the timing just couldn't have been more awkward. Yeah. Have you heard anything uh, rumor-wise about uh, Fox News or one of the news outlets being tipped off as to uh, – you know, uh, maybe you ought to prepare for the procedures used in eliminating a vice president. Have you heard anything to that degree? I have not. I, I can't imagine that. You know, if I, I guess these conversations are always sort of parlor game Washington type yeah. of thing. I, mean, yeah. I remember when, when Donald Trump was getting ready to run for re-election in 2019, early 2020, there was a, a bunch of talk around Washington that he was going to ditch mm-hmm. Vice President Mike Pence in favor of a woman. Of, of men like Nikki Haley on the ticket. Obviously, that never happened. So, you know, there's uh, Kamala Harris's low approval ratings are certainly uh, giving Democrats a lot of heartburn, but I don't think they know what to do about it right now. Beto O'Rourke announces bid for Texas governor. He cites GOP's fringe policies. Fringe policies like what? The Second Amendment? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, come like, on. like, like uh, yeah, standing up for gun owners. <laughs> any, any, obviously, uh, citing obviously the uh, the abortion law in Texas, which has been uh, debated at the Supreme Court this year, and and so on. And but he, you're right, he is known um, from his previous campaigns as a, as a far left person in the Democratic Party on the issue of guns. And he already lost a uh, statewide race to Ted Cruz, the senator, in 2018. So I have no no doubt that he's uh, the strongest candidate for the Democratic nomination. But whether he can win statewide in a general election, uh, he hasn't proven that yet.
I saw him the other day. He said, I'm born for this. <laughs> you really? Okay. <laughs> okay. No arrogance there. Huh? No, no, not at all. Uh, Americans set record for quitting jobs in September. That's a scary story. What are we looking at here? Laziness, low wages, free money for everyone uh, uh, they were getting boy, from you know, the pandemic? Uh, COVID obviously has a, had a lot to do with it. I, I think you know, working from home or working remotely is uh, a lot more attractive to people right now, as opposed to jobs where they deal with people face to face. You know, the the amount of government unemployment benefits that people were getting during the pandemic, the added benefits allowed people to pad their savings accounts in a lot of cases. And Basically, so you have the government funding uh, people's ability to go out and look for better paying jobs now. And, and um, a lot of people are deciding, you know, it's just not worth it to their health risk to work in a closed office setting. And also you're finding a lot of people who are, to be frank, my age, who are, you know, around 60 years old, who are, who are even in their late 50s, who are saying, you know what, I'm just going to retire early. It's not worth it anymore. So there's a whole lot of dynamics going on there. But in, in uh, September, I believe it was, this, we set a new record with 4.4 million people just quitting their jobs. And that's got to be uh, concerning both to employers and, and to the administrations. All right. I just want to make sure you're not taking early retirement or anything. No, no plans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I retired a couple of times, but I just keep <laughs> tinkering. It. I kind of get well, bored, you know. We're so, glad We're glad you haven't left. Yeah. Uh, what are you working on? Anything special? I'm working on that very story on, on, on the labor shortage and the quit rate and the reasons for it. And uh, yeah. Okay. Very good. Folks, you can read all of Dave Boyer's stories at WashingtonTimes.com. Dave, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thanks, Andy. Take care. Washington Times Deputy Politics Editor Dave Boyer. And finally today, the Fouch. Dr. Anthony Fauci has stepped in it again. He now claims that, quote, there is a misplaced perception about people's individual right to make a decision that supersedes the societal safety. What? So the government can override my personal rights at any time? Has Fauci ever read the Constitution? Who made this guy to be king of all people? And he now wants three shots per person and another year or so of mask mandates. This will never go away until we say that's enough. India, with a huge population, is doing so much better using well-known drugs like ivermectin than the British Overseas Territory of Gibraltar where cases have spiked wildly in the past couple of weeks, despite averaging 2.7 shots of vaccine and boosters per person. How can that be? Well, I'll tell you how. $90 million a day profit for pharmaceutical companies. You can't stop the cash cow now, can we, Anthony? By the way, Florida, despite few or zero restrictions, continues to lead California, the most restrictive COVID state, in every category. So how does that work? Thanks for joining me today and remember to receive a 50% discount on an annual digital subscription to the Washington Times. Go to washingtontimes.com Andy. You'll get 24 seven digital access to the Washington Times at 50% off. Again, go to washingtontimes.com slash A-N-D-Y. I'm Andy Parks. Have a great day.